Netflix about this pretty scary looking film because I saw the trailer. I'm like, oh, creepy. As a producer, you get so many projects. So what made you, what drew you to this particular project? Well, I, I'm pretty niche where I only adapt existing Japanese properties. So when I was looking at various content in Japan, I really loved the idea of, it originally, the original book, Room 203, has just a single female protagonist who can't go home. And JP, John Polygon, our, our initial writer, thought to make it you know, roommates. But what I loved about this was, you know, having, be, everyone can relate to the idea of being in a situation where they spent all their money on, you know, first month and last month and they can't leave and they have a problem at home where they can't go home. So imagine being scared to death where you're living for whatever reason, but you can't go home. And something about that resonated with me where I was like, I know a writer can take this home. And they absolutely did. Well, it's kind of frightening. You can't go home. You can't go home can't go home so what do you do and you know and I think as you see with our protagonist Kim in the movie she's growing a lot and she learns to just this is where she comes to her own and she fights it so it's really cool to see I love that you circled back to the fact that the Japanese they have such an amazing genre of films and they do carry they have some amazing horror stuff so good for you to be able to pick that how would you describe this film in three words Scary, inspiring, and great storytelling. It's hyphenated. So where can people find you, follow you, and find out more about your journey and the film? Um, I am, well, so we have a social media for Room 203. I myself am private, but they can still invite me and, and request me. Um, I'm, I'm pretty big on Instagram. I kind of do my journey on there the most. I'm on Twitter as well. But um, just look for Room 203 Movie and you'll find where we're at. She's private, but you can find her. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. It's so nice to meet you. Thank you. Thank you. What is the role you play in this very creepy, scary horror film? I'm Kim White. I'm the lead in the film. Now, this is... Um, Everybody's talking about how scary this film is. What was the most important thing that attracted you to this film and this role? Um, the, the story in particular. I was choosing between two things actually at the time and I just liked that it was like a best friend story and about protecting the people that you love most in your life, which has always been my best friend for me too. So, But it's so creepy scary. It's still super scary, yeah, I guess. <laughs> I haven't seen the whole thing yet, so um, yeah, no. So How you've not seen this? What you're in it? I know I haven't seen anything, so I'm just I'm I'm just as worried as you are. It'll probably scare you. Yeah, it'll probably actually scare me. <laughs> I have no idea. Yeah. What would you want us to come away with when we see this film? Entertainment, of course. But what would be the main thing you would want us to come away with when we see this film? You kind of touched on it just now, but what would that be? Um. So just what a girl would do for her best friend. Uh, yeah. It's loyalty. Yeah, it's loyalty. It's about like, I don't, more than that, just like, I don't know, I feel with girls, like your best friends since you grew up, like they're just family to you. They're your sister, especially if you didn't have sisters, which I never had sisters. Like my best friend's my sister and you know, it's like that familial, familial bond that you can make with someone. Yeah. So how can we find you, follow you on social media? Yeah, uh, I'm Francesca Schwerb. On social media, I'm Francesca O, which is my middle name, and then Schwerb. My initials are Fox, which is kind of fun, but uh, it'll be like at that at Instagram, and then yeah, it's like the only social media I use. So I cannot wait to see Room Two or Three because I'm a fan of horror films, so I'm ready to be scared and frightened at all those cool things that happens. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. I can only tell you the trailer is creepy, creepy, creepy. So I want to know what what was your creepiest experience doing this film? So we shot in Shreveport and the whole town is quite creepy and it just inspires you, you know what I mean? It just like makes you almost be that person. Um, and also I just, I favorite horror movies all my life. Uh, I've always played around when I was a kid and I just feel like this was really ironic that it came my way. And I'm very happy it did, yeah. What's your favorite horror film? <sighs> Um, there's a couple of new ones that are great, but the one that really stuck with me is The Ring, because I was a really little kid when that came out. The thing scared the shit out of me. I used to go around trying to like creep my friends, I'd be like, with the hair down, I'm gonna do it, and so, yeah. <laughs> so fantastic. What are the three words you would use to describe Room 203? 
Mm. I think it's vintage, it's uh, creepy, and it's uh, suspenseful. Awesome, thank you so much. How do we find you on social media and fans can follow you? On Instagram, my handle is life of underscore Vika, V-I-K-A. Well, Vika, congratulations. I can't wait to see the film. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, guys. Ben, from everything I'm hearing tonight, from seeing the trailer, first of all, I must tell you, I'm already scared. And that's just a trailer. So, good job. What intrigued you when you got the script? What was your vision? You got the script, you read it, and you're like, okay, how do I come out the gate making this pop? What would that be for you? I mean, I, I, I was just having this conversation earlier that um, I'm a big fan of like old school horror, like the 1970s and 80s horror, stuff like that. I feel like that the tones that are set there are like really unsettling, whether that's down to the score, whether that's down to the film grain, the stock, um, you know, and that kind of inspires me like to make a movie like this because the script, you know, was great. We also we did like a little rewrite on it as well, like because to adapt to his locations and where we were shooting. Um, but what inspires me is like the old school horror because I think that's way scarier than and not, not knocking new, you know, some of the new films, but just my personal taste. Um, and I wanted to kind of like bring something back of the old school kind of like into the new school, so kind of a hybrid, you know, yeah. Because I can tell from the trailer the choices you made in cinematography were really special, and that's just a trailer. So I can't imagine what the film was like. So how did you work with your DP on getting the right choices and the right tone for the film? You know, the deep, my DP, Joel Froome, is uh, a rock star. He's like a guy that's going to come up and he's, he's going to do big things. Um, and I, I'm good because, like, we connected, like, early, so I'm really grateful for that. Um, but, like, how we came up with the look is that we just started talking about story. And, um, you know, we wanted to go with, like, kind of a chiaroscuro approach, which is um, kind of like shadow and light, like letting it be dark in the dark places and just, you know, having just enough, enough, uh, just enough light to, like, light up the characters. So we're all afraid of the dark, right? So we played into what's, you know, leaning into the dark, you know? So that kind of approach. Yeah. And I'm seriously telling you, we see a lot of trailers, but I'm telling you, that trailer... I have to see this film, like without a doubt. Normally trailers, you're excited about it, but this trailer pulls you in. It's almost like its own story. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's you know, like this film as well, I'm, I'm really grateful as well because not many people um, were shooting movies during COVID. And we got to do that, you know, so like everyone that came together had that kind of like same sort of mantra to that like, you know, this is few and far between right now. So we're all going to band together and everyone gave the 100 percent. And it's because of that, everyone coming together that made it so special, you know, you yeah. know. Well, I can't wait to see the full film. From what I saw right of the trailer, I, I'm in. I want to see. How do we follow your journey, find out more about what you do, and just stay in touch and follow you? Um. Well, my name is Ben Jagger, but you know what? I'm not on social media. I'm not on social media. I knew you were going to say that. Like old school horror. I'm old school in nature. Do you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Google you and find you. Yeah. 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 Everybody, Google this man because he's amazing and watch this film. How do we get to watch this film? For people who aren't here tonight, what do they do? What's next? Um, it's on like, you know, VOD, stuff like that. It's like on, on iTunes, on Amazon. Um, it's playing in select theaters as well, like around the country. Um, I think it's on Voodoo as well. You'll have to ask uh, the main producer, this girl right here, Anne-Marie. Find out of her. She knows all the details. Congratulations. You did amazing work, and I can't wait to see more of your work. Congratulations. Absolutely. Cheers. Thank you. Absolutely. Quinn, you're in this cool, scary horror film. What was it about this project and the script that really intrigued you? I liked um, a lot. I mean, reading the script for the first time, what struck out to me is that these characters seemed very real and that they could exist off the page. I feel like that's very rare, um, especially in horror movies. Um, but, I mean, each of these characters was fully lived. They were their own person. They had clear beginning, middles, and ends, and I dug that. I thought that was super cool. And what role did you play? I play the character of Tony. Um, I go home with... Uh, one of the leads, and yeah. I'm a... Uh, one of those guys. Not a nice uh, guy. Not a nice guy at all. I was about to say, are you good or bad? We don't want to know. No spoiler alerts. It's yeah, okay. No spoilers, so, sure. What's your favorite horror film of all time? My favorite horror film of all time? That's tough. Um, I'm a very big baby when it comes to horror movies, <laughs> but... I was just talking, I have a big fear of clowns, but for some reason that makes me like those movies even more. So, big fan of It, um, love that, love the book, so, yeah. I don't know why people are afraid of clowns, I guess it's some weird kind of thing, but it's okay, it, they, it's okay. There's something unsettling, there's something unsettling about them. <laughs> so how do we find you and follow you on social media? 
Yeah, so my uh, Instagram is Quinn.Nair, just my first and last name, and that is my social media for everything that I have. Well, Quinn, I can't wait to see the film and see what kind of a bad boy you are. All right, no spoiler alerts. <laughs> Thank you so much. Congratulations. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, we all love ho horror. So what was it about this film that intrigued you? I would say, like, growing up, I love horror films, and I always wanted to star in a film, a horror film, but I, I have a cameo in this film. So I guess it was on my bucket list to just be in a film like this, or a love film. And yeah, just being a part of it and growing up loving Chucky and Screen and you know hearing the background on this film I was like I have to jump on it and be a part of it and that's what I did. What is your favorite horror film of all time? The Hills Have Eyes. <laughs> yes, The Hills Have Eyes is interesting and I heard it's kind of some truth to it. Recently I saw that on TikTok so uh, yes. So how do we find you and follow you on social media? Um, you can find me on Instagram at Bria.Raven or on TikTok at Bria Fleming. Bria, I can't wait to see you in the film and other horror films since this is a genre you love. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you. I play the part of uh, Steve in the film. I uh, am sort of a slimy, kind of yeah, rough guy in the bar. I've had a little too much to drink and I come on pretty strong to both of the girls, really. It was one of them at first, but you know. And I, I get what's coming to me. Just, you know, no sport. But you see, that's the thing. You look like this really nice guy, but underneath all this guy, you're playing this character. Is it kind of difficult for you to switch off and play something against type? What does that feel like for you? No, I, I like that a lot better. Yeah, no, that's really fun for me. It challenges you. Mm-hmm. I tend to, I actually, yeah, I find myself playing a lot of uh, pretty terrible people often, <laughs> actually, strangely. I don't know why. Maybe it's... For some reason, that's what I keep running into. That's why you're an actor. That's what an actor does. That, that, that's right. Yeah, no, no, I'm happy. No, I'm very happy with it. That's, yeah, I got so how do we find you and follow you on social media? Oh, uh, I'm on Instagram, uh, Sam underscore A underscore Coleman. If you can describe room two or three in three words, how would you describe this film? Oh boy, I would describe it as, for one thing, funny, because I think my scene's actually pretty funny. And of course, pretty scary also. And I, I think it's got a lot of heart also. I think there's like some really sweet stuff in there. I, the two girls, they're great. Scary, funny, and full of heart. Mm -hmm. I like that. Thank you so much and enjoy tonight. Thank you. We are with the co-producer here, and this is fabulous. I'm hearing all these cool things about how scary this film is. What drew you to be part of this project? Uh, Amory, <laughs> Amory Serino. Uh, she called me on, you know, to help out with the project because it was during COVID. No one wanted to work. No one thought we could shoot a movie. And um, we're kind of crazy and daring. Like, okay, so what? COVID, let's do it. <laughs> I'm, I like this woman. I'm yeah, exactly. So, um, so yeah, Amory Serino. She pulled me on. So it was cool. From there, we we did a a lot of location scouting and um, you know found a director so it was great to be a part of it you know and literally got it done in a year so that was another amazing thing yeah so horror is a genre that you love um, I actually do love John El horror I do and your favorite horror film of all time it would be uh, scream ah, yeah. you're a scream girl okay all right I see that <laughs> I remember when it first came out, um, we were all scared to leave the theater. <laughs> we thought his face was going to come around, so yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. so how do we find you and follow you on social media? Um, it's Ty Whittington Scott. I'm on Instagram and uh, Facebook, so, but I'm hardly on Facebook, but Instagram, Ty Whittington Scott, yes. Hi, congratulations. I cannot wait to see room 203, and I really want to be scared. I hope I can sleep after that, but that's okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Well, thank you for being here. You look absolutely stunning. Love your dress. And it's wonderful to support films like this. So is um, horror a genre that you gravitate to? Or tell me about that. You know, I, I not not really as a performer, as a as a viewer. It scares me. But I do know um, the director, one of the director's very close personal friends. So I wanted to be here for her as well as him. Um, and just all of the artists. Horror is very difficult. I've done horror in the past. So just to really embody that emotion, um, that physicality that comes with horror, whether you're the ingenue or the killer, um, it's it's. Difficult. Difficult, so we'll see. Maybe horror is a new niche for me. So, on your last project, what was challenging for you on in doing horror? Um, I I don't know. I wouldn't say it was challenging. It's just 
I think I think finding where you gravitate creatively to and and embracing um, the unknown. It's not necessarily I wouldn't call it a, a challenge. It's more exciting, but it could be a challenge because it's scary territory. So, yeah. so what are you expecting from tonight's film? Lots of scary things. <laughs> Lots of scary things. We'll see. So how can we find you on social media and follow your journey? My long name, which is Jale Vosu, Z-H-A-L-E-H, -E and then you'll find me. Um, and yeah, I just Instagram, TikTok, all the things. And next week I have very big shows premiering, so very excited for you to see me and more things. Well, congratulations again. You look fabulous, so enjoy the film. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I am here tonight because I directed Anne Marie's last film, Root Letter, and tonight she looks like a goddess and it's wonderful to be here and celebrating her big, big new movie. And she does look like a goddess, which is wonderful. A little bit about what you're doing next and what's coming up for you. Absolutely. I just directed a horror movie that I'm also acting in for Lionsgate called Mid-Century and it stars Bruce Stern and Stephen Lang of Avatar and Don't Breathe and Shane West. And, yeah. Oh, fantastic. So genre, is horror a genre that you really gravitate to? Or? It is. I'm super passionate about it and everything I direct is sort of like dark, provocative and cerebral and very much in the horror thriller genre. Your favorite horror film of all time. I'm sure you have many but if you could pick one, what would that be? I love Mulholland Drive. I'm a huge David Lynch fan, so I think anything like that is really dark and sexy, and I'm here for it. Dark and sexy horror, guys. You heard it right here from this beautiful woman. How do we follow you on social media and continue following your journey? On Instagram, I'm Sonia K. O'Hara, and I would love to share all of my updates on there with everyone. Thank you, Sonia, with your beautiful smile. You look fabulous tonight, and enjoy the film. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Suzanne, you're here tonight to support, so what are you most excited about? Oh, I'm excited. I love horror films, but I haven't seen a good one in a long time. So I'm ready for a good one. I'm excited about the director. I'm excited. Bring me something I'll remember. Even like they asked me about the number two or three. Let me remember it. Let me be afraid of it. That's fine. But I just want to see something unique and different. And I hear the director can do that and bring that to the table. So that's what I'm most excited about tonight. So before you leave the carpet, we're excited you're here to support. What's coming up for you next and how can we follow you on social media? Oh, I am actually um, starring in a movie called Dear Mother and she is a mother that uh, lost a spouse and um, she becomes an angry alcoholic mother who slides down but as you know in this life we can make a choice. I won't tell you what choice she made but you can rise up or stay down. I'm excited about it. It's my first starring role and it's called Dear Mother. You can find me on Facebook, Susan Lavelle. You can find me on Instagram, actress Susan Lavelle. You can definitely find me on IMDb, Susan Lavelle. <laughs> Thank you so much. You look great. Enjoy the film. Thank you so much. Thank you. Maya, you're here to support. This is awesome. What are you expecting tonight from Room 203? I'm excited for a lot of jump scares and uh, I love Anne Marie's work. I've been a fan um, of hers, so I'm really excited to see, uh, you know, something scary. Are you going to be scared to go back to your room or your apartment or whatever it is? It's 201, which is close, so we'll, we'll have to know about the 201 and 203s. So what's coming up in your world next? Uh, for me next, um, I'm acting in a film produced by Exile, um, and I'm mostly a screenwriter, so I have some projects that I'm writing for as well. Yeah. How do we find you on social media? Sure, I'm at M-A-I-A dot H-E-N-K-I-N. Well, enjoy tonight, and I can't wait to see you on the next project. Happy birthday, Rally! Thank you, thank you guys so much. Happy birthday to you too. Thank you. We have an Aries trio tonight, and you're here to support this scary film. The trailer is scary and freaky, so what are you most excited about tonight? Honestly, the, this is going to be my first horror movie since The Grudge. Since The Grudge. <laughs> yeah. Where have you been? What have you been doing? Harry Potter's as scary as it gets for me. So I came out to support Victoria and the rest of the cast, and I'm like, for her, I'm going to sit through this. It's good. <laughs> I'm sure you're going to sleep at night tonight. This is going to be freaky. I'm going to sleep. I'm going to just light some sage, <laughs> and, it, and I'm going to be all right. I'm going to be all right. <laughs> I love it. What's your all-time favorite horror film? I know there are many, but what's your all-time? You know what? You know which movie like scared me off was Insidious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then since then, I'm like, you know, I don't know if I'm built for this, but I'm here tonight. So. <laughs> if you got a role in a horror film, like if somebody said to you, "Hey, Riley, you got to do this film," what would you want to be? Who'd you want to play? 
Ooh, I want to be in like Freddy vs. Jason. Uh, you know, a little action, a little war. <laughs> oh, goodness. Aries is popping out tonight. <laughs> you're right, you're right. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. So how do we find you and follow you on social media? What's coming up in your world? Tell us. Actually, so I just moved from Canada. I'm out here. I'm a singer-songwriter, uh, artist, recording artist, and my first EP is re being released on April 22nd, 2022. So um, you can find me at Raleigh Music. That's R-A-W-L-E-M-U-S-I-C and uh, www.raleighmusic.com. Yeah. Well, Raleigh, we're going to follow you and find you because you're Aries. We got to connect. Aries folks can't not connect. No, sure. Congratulations. Thank and you so when you get home, just lock the doors and be safe. I'm going to do that. I'm going to lock the doors, the windows, everything. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank Have fun so tonight. Much. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Guys. Thank you guys. I can only say I'm super excited about this. The trailer blew me away. And that scared the be you know what out of me. So if I am scared by a trailer, I don't know if I want to watch this film until it's like daytime so I can sleep at night. Yeah. So I noticed an adaption. So what was it about? How did you decide to frame this when you got this? So so I also am scared of scary movies. So so so, so uh, I take a lot of help from Ben Jagger, who was also director, and we uh, wrote together. Uh, JP wrote the original script, so he did the original adaptation. It came to Ben and I afterward, and then basically what happened was uh, I went down to Louisiana to see the locations and then cater the script to those specific locations. So that was a really fun process to kind of get to see the basement of this old building and, and find the haunts in there. It felt haunted. It felt haunted. Yeah, yeah. So, so it was actually pretty easy. The inspiration was was in the locations and it was my first time in Shreveport, Louisiana too so there's a little bit of magic uh, when you're exploring a city and getting a chance to cater the script to the city so I had a lot of guidance from from the rest of the team so I can't take too much credit it was a lot of Ben Jagger and uh, JP who did a lot of that work. Was there a moment, were you on set while they were filming this? I actually, so this was in the height of COVID so I actually had to come back so I went down during pre-production, did the writing, came back and did some more writing and then and then came back to LA. So I wasn't there while they were filming. I just kind of got the updates on Zoom. <laughs> yeah. So how do we follow your journey, find out more about what you do and all that stuff? Yeah, so I have a film actually that just premiered at the Santa Barbara International Film Festival called 1-800-HOT-NIGHT. So that movie's, uh, you can see that on Instagram. I'm also on Instagram, Nick Ritchie, and, and on Twitter. And, and uh, yeah, just happy to have another project coming out. Now with this room two or three, if you had to describe this project that you're involved in in three words, how would you describe this film? Oh, audacious, <laughs> exciting, and, and scary. <laughs> yes. I like all three words. I'm so excited to see this film, and I love horror and genre, so it's great. Congratulations, Thanks. and we will be following you on social media. Thanks. Pleasure to meet you. Thank you so much. Thank you. And you're here to support the film tonight, correct? Absolutely. So what are we excited about seeing tonight? Horror. I love horror. Um, I'm excited to see what they've done with this. I also moved in recently to a new place, so we'll see if this is a sign of things to come. <laughs> What's your favorite horror film of all time? Well, um, I, would, I would have to say The Exorcist. Yeah, absolutely. Really still scares me. Um, yeah, absolutely. I like to think about the historical aspects in it, the, the God complex, all of those things. And the bed shaking. You don't want to be like worrying about what's under your bed at night. Right, exactly. Or, or Linda Blair. She was really scary in that. So how do we find you on social media? Uh, Lobata Sadi, L-O-B-A-T-A-S-A-D-I. Have fun tonight and enjoy yourself. Thank you so much.